Good morning. Welcome or welcome back to Bookie Monsters. My name is PK, and uh, this morning we will be going through the Spy vs. Spy September ideas. Usually Monday through Friday we look at the new releases of each week and uh, by genre by genre. And we did that Monday through Wednesday this week. And then yesterday and today we were looking at some spy versus spy type of books. Uh, I appreciate that you are either watching this live or probably watching it on replay because it's early in the morning. Uh, if you are here, I hope you have your cup of coffee. And we will jump into this because the time goes by really fast. And uh, quiet that down. It is Friday, August 25th. Finally, we are at Friday, which makes me very happy. Seems like it took a while to get here. Plus, a cold is trying to get me, so I am just not pleased with that development. Good morning, Alicia. Welcome. Hope you had a good night. I think I slept hard, but would love to sleep some more. Let's jump in. Okay, so I mentioned that I saw, well, I was, I was kind of looking for humorous ones, um, but then I found some other things too. So this will be sort of a mix of that, just eclectic things here. This one, I believe, was one of the humorous ones. This is called Conflict of Intrigues by M.L. Yost, first of two in the Intersections saga. Um, and it is Kindle Unlimited. It says, ripped from the headlines, the 36-hour dash through the Marlebone intersection is a breakneck blur between real history and fictional mystery. La, 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 la. The microchip is back in play. Six words, meaningless to anyone else. To Dr. John Markston, former British Army Captain, now Royal Military Academy Sandhurst Professor, those words are fraught with disturbing insinuations. Hearing an unknown caller resurrect a 10-year-old operation was troubling enough. The hint of a WikiLeaks-style exposure of classified intelligence that was once in his care is thoroughly alarming. John had walked away from the British Army Intelligence Corps, a life of secrets, for good reason. Now the stakes may be too high not to step back in, but John is not the only one to be spooked by his old ghost. Irish-born American executive Catherine McKenna relegated her life in the line of fire to the rearview mirror nearly a decade ago when she moved to London to take a publishing job. When an innocuous detour upends her firmly wrote agenda, however, it also resurrects the haunted past she believed long buried. The intersection, a London bookshop, the collision, the professor, and the publisher. The impact, a conflict of intrigues. So that was an interesting one. Oh, thank you. I think it's going to run its course. Uh, at least right now, the nose isn't gushing like an open faucet. <laughs> Good morning, Lee. Welcome. Good to see you. Indeed. Happy Friday. No kidding. And then as I was looking around at humorous ones, I found another middle grade uh, called Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> National Espionage Rescue and Defense Society Nerds, Book One. It's like trying to make uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. mean something in the Avenger movies. <laughs> Meet Nerds, a team of 11 year old super spies. Duncan Glue Stick Dewey, he's a paste eater who can stick to walls. <laughs> Ruby Pufferfish Pete, her allergies help her detect danger and dishonesty. Heathcliff Choppers Hodges, he controls minds with his buck teeth. Julio Flinch Escala, his hyperactivity gives him super speed and strength. Matilda Weezer Choi, 
Her inhalers enable her to fly and blast enemies. Jackson Braceface Jones, the new recruit. This metal mouth is the team's go-to gadget guy. If only he can get over becoming a nerd. Can this team of misfits save the world from their secret headquarters in the basement of their school? Can you read nerds without laughing? Without laughing? Go ahead and try. And it is uh, on Kindle Unlimited or Kids version of that. Uh, it's by Michael Buckley, and there's five in that series. That looked just too cute for words. Had to include it. Um, also, in my looking around, I came across this one, the Money Penny Diaries of, of course, James Bond. So that got my attention. Uh, by Kate Westbrook, and there's three in this series. The perfect example of chic sophistication and unflappable poise, Miss Jane Moneypenny, personal secretary to Secret Service Chief M, handles her boss and her co cohort of unruly double O agents with good humored grace. Yet behind her polished perfection, she exudes a certain aura of mystery. Indeed, as her explosive private diaries reveal, there is more to Miss Moneypenny than meets the eye. When she hears that her favorite agent James Bond's secret Cuban missile is jeopardized and his life in danger, she impulsively plunges into the glamorous, dangerous world of espionage to save his skin. No, oh, that look cute! That one might have to go on my TBR. All right, so let's get back down here so I can kind of keep. This one I think was another humorous one. Kindle Unlimited. Tongue tied with stomach knots, an enlightened comedy, The Dip Whipple Chronicles by Reginald Dip Whipple. Obviously a pseudonym. It's a comical autobiography, fictional, secret agent extraordinary. It describes Reggie's recruitment and initial training as a spy in his first couple of missions. Interspaced throughout this fictional story are true episodes and truly funny ones involving historical spies such as Casanova, Biblical Times, and Roman Empire. If you want a little mix of things like that, that's a big, big long description there. We won't waste the time doing that, but that was something that caught my eye. And I think some of these are going to be straightforward, but they, like I say, they caught my attention. The Repurposed Spy by Oliver Dawson. Dawson. After years spent teaching, Ronald Jones is ready to escape his chronic anxiety and distrust of others and resolves to explore the world. His first destination, Brazil, a place he once visited as a young man. But just as he's ready to embark on his adventure, the enigmatic Mr. Smith appears on his doorstep turning his world upside down. Suddenly, Jones finds himself in a new and dangerous existence, surrounded by moody men in suits, ship-shifting female agents, spooks, and robotic controllers. With no apparent experience in this new world, Jones is in mortal, mortal danger and way out of his depth. Close that one. And I'm sure I'm going to say this one wrong. It's probably pronounced Smith or something, but East of Hounslow by Karum Raman. There are three in the Jay Kasim series. Meet Jay, small time dealer, accidental jihadist, the one man who can save us all. And it was shortlisted for an Edgar Award. Uh, Javid call him Jay, is a dope dealer living in West London. He goes to mosque on Friday, and he's just bought his pride and joy a BMW. He lives with his mom, and life seems sweet. But his world is about to turn upside down because MI5 have been watching him, and they think he's just the man they need for a delicate mission. One thing's for sure, now he's a long way east of Hounslow. Jay's life will never be the same again. With the edgy humor of a slow house and it's which we will be looking at too eventually and 
Red Rover, Red Rover. Let me do a quick little double, double check. Yes, that one's definitely on my list. Uh, Red Rover, Red Rover. The Accidental Cases of Emily Abbott by Perry Kirkpatrick, one of eight. And not too long, so you could whip through these. He makes terrible coffee, but he sure is good in a car chase. Emily Abbott is working hard as a coffee barista in downtown Phoenix, keeping one eye on her tiny college fund and the other on the mysterious new guy with his profound lack of coffee making skills. Just when she thinks they might be getting the hang of working together, she abruptly th she's abruptly thrust into his world of espionage and danger. Brent Peterson, a.k.a. Agent Nighthawk, needs her help protecting a defecting enemy spy and keeping the information he carries out of the wrong hands. But she's just a barista. What can she do? Much more than she thinks. And there are eight books in that series. Speaking of coffee, coffee is required. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, <laughs> Operation Underpants. Max and Olivia book one, and it is a Kindle Unlimited. It's by Mark A. Biggs. On a thrilling journey with Max and Olivia, international spies who find themselves unceremoniously dumped in a retirement home by their ungrateful children. Forgotten and left to languish, they resign themselves to the passage of time, waiting for old age to take its course. However, fate has other plans for this dynamic duo. After discovering a secret message in the newspaper, they are drawn back into the dangerous world of espionage. Escaping from the home, they embark on a mission to the UK, where the fate of London and much of the world hangs in the balance. And there are six in that series. which had some really cute titles, Operation Origami, Operation Snowflake. It just looked cute. I had to include it. What am I doing? I don't know. So we looked at nerds. Uh, the Athena Protocol. Yeah, you can see why my list kept getting added to and added to. Okay, The Athena Protocol by Shamim Sarif. There's two in this series. Born Identity meets Karen McManus in this action-packed series. Opener about a spy gone rogue. Perfect for fans of Ali Carter and Killing Eve, which there's uh, that is based on a book as well. So we will get to that. Jesse Archer is a member of the Athena Protocol, an elite organization of female spies who enact vigilante justice around the world. Athena operatives are never supposed to shoot to kill, so when Jesse can't stop herself from pulling the trigger, she gets kicked out of the organization right before a huge mission to take down a human trafficker in Belgrade. Jesse needs to find to right her wrong and prove herself, so she starts her own investigation into the trafficking. But going rogue means she has no one to watch her back as she delves into horrors she uncovers. Meanwhile, her former teammates have been ordered to bring her down. Jessie must face danger from all sides if she's to complete her mission and survive. And if you ever watched NCIS LA, they went rogue all the time. Nothing new there. But that sounds intriguing to me too. But there's only two, which means you're not doing a huge commitment. Now this one, I think I read a long, I did, back in 2005, okay. Um, a Gentleman's Game, a Queen and Country novel by Greg Rucka. There's three in this series. Tara Chase may be the most dangerous woman alive. She can seduce you into believing she's the woman of your dreams or kill you with the icy efficiency of an executioner. As the new head of special operations for British intelligence, she no longer has to court death in the field. She wants to. We throw away the old rules, the old school, the old boy network. The world of international espionage is about to learn the hard way that spying is no longer merely a gentleman's game. 
When an unthinkable act of terror devastates London, nothing will stop Terror Chase from hunting down those responsible. Her job is simple. Stop the terrorists before they kill, before they strike a second time. To succeed, she'll do anything and everything it takes. She'll have to kill again. Only this time, the personal stakes will be higher than ever. For the terrorist counter-strike, will require that Tara allow herself to be used as bait by the government she serves. This time, she's turning her very life into a weapon that can be used only once. But as she and her former mentor race toward destiny at a remote terrorist training camp in Saudi Arabia, Tara begins to question just who's pulling the trigger and who's the real enemy. In this new kind of war, betrayal can take any form, including one's duty to queen and country. That started to ring a bell. Um, like I say, it looks like I, I got this in 2005 when I had discovered um, MI5, the British TV show, also known as Spooks. And along those lines, I did get this one. Gail Linz is a, a known name in um, spy books. But I hadn't read this one, so I did get this one yesterday. The Book of Spies by Gail Linz one of two in series or you know, a duology shall we say and it had a good page number count which always gets my attention for centuries emperors historians and even the vatican have tried to locate ivan the terrible's magnificent library of gold see all the triggers there books libraries practically templars um, a long missing archive containing gold covered bejeweled books dating all the way back to the ancient greeks now one of the volumes the Book of Spies has surfaced and along with it the highly secret book club that owns the Library of Gold. They form a cabal of the globe, globe's most powerful men, men who will do anything to achieve their aims and protect their interests. When the CIA discovers a connection between the legendary library and a bank account linked to terrorists, they turn to Rare Books curator Eva Blake for help. Soon an attempt is made on Eva's life. Determined not only to survive, but to uncover the truth, Eva turns to the only person she can trust, Judd Ryder, a former intelligence agent with his own agenda and a troubled past. Together, Judd and Eva embark on an international adventure from London to Rome, Istanbul, and Athens. Somehow they must do what no one else has been able to do, find the library and stay alive. Look at all those triggers. Of course I had to get it yesterday. So that is definitely on my TBR. How did I miss it before? I know. I was trying to figure out how can I read the maximum number of books and still accomplish what I, the other ones I want to read, like maybe one a week, which means four. Oh, it's just going to have to spill over. Just make it a, a commitment, a year's commitment. Okay. Uh, the end of me. by Tara Brown for in this series, the Single Lady Spy series. 12 years ago, Evie Evans left behind a dangerous job to be a full-time mother and wife. Suddenly widowed and left to raise her children alone, Evie hopes she's prepared for anything the world might toss at her, but there's no way to prepare for what comes next. In the decades since she last worked, the world of espionage has changed, as has Evie. The minivan driving, minivan driving mother of two couldn't be further from the woman she once was and doesn't have time to catch up. At every turn, another secret or betrayal is awaiting her. A retired spy, a dead husband, a new job offer to save the world. It's been one hell of a week for Evie Evans, and it's only getting worse. So that also sounded interesting. Never say spy. By Diane Henders, one of 17. And look at the page count. So this is like a, a hefty commitment, unless the other ones are shorter. <clears throat> if a kick-ass middle-aged bookkeeper got sucked into a spy's life, dot, dot, dot. Despite her fondness for weapons and ripe language, middle-aged Aiden Kelly's resume reads bookkeeper, not badass. She's leaving the city to fulfill her dream of country living when she gets carjacked by a man who shouldn't exist. When RCMP officer John Kane kills her attacker, Aiden hopes her troubles are over. But Kane's investigation implicates her in a techno espionage plot, and criminal charges become the least of her worries when she finds herself in the crosshairs of the same dangerous group Kane suspects her of aiding. 
Armed with only her analytical mind, a warped sense of humor, and a penchant for profanity, Aiden faces off against international spies and an RCMP officer who's not what he seems. Pity her enemies, because nobody's tougher than a middle-aged woman who wants her dream back. 17 in this series. Where was this one hiding? Reach for the spy. Tell me no spies. A spy I am. A spy for a spy. Spy, spy away. Spy now, pay later. Spy high. Spy away home. The spies that bind. Kiss and say good spy. <laughs> Once burned, twice spy. Friends and spy places. A spy for help. Spy in the sky. Live and let spy. Where was this series hiding? Of course this author had to keep writing these books because she, she probably had the titles and then said, well, I need to write books about these. <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? I love finding stuff like that, which is why we do this. Because uh, you never know what's out there. Uh, we did the Money Penny. This one was a historical. Kindle Unlimited, Napoleon's Woman, The Lady Spies, series number one by Samantha Saxon. What if a British war hero is captured by the French during the Napoleonic Wars and upon escaping finds his beautiful capture waltzing across the ballrooms of London's Hauteton? The Romantic Times award-winning novel, so it won, a, won an award, set during the turbulent days of the Napoleonic Wars, the Blah, blah, blah. We get it. Lady Celeste Rivenhall leads a double life. She's a British agent posing as a spy for the French. She has become numb to the constant danger surrounding her, accepting that at any moment the Emperor will discover her lies and make her suffer for them. But when the legendary Lord Aidan Dewhurst, Earl of Wessex, is delivered into her hands as a prisoner of war, Celeste knows that she will risk anything to save the courageous British officer, anything but the truth. Caught in the web of lies she skillfully woven on behalf of the crown, Celeste is forced to return to England to trap a true traitor. But her prey is nowhere near as dangerous as the handsome Earl who is tracking her, yet cannot seem to resist her. Her betrayal of England ignites his fury. Her seductive beauty turns his own body against him, but it is her deepest secret that will bring him to his knees. As you can tell, this one is, uh, and of course of the awards, uh, a romantic one. Uh, we'll have to stop there because the bell has rung. Uh, so fear not, we will do this again next week. And, uh, I'm listing the, uh, the books that we do talk about in the, the body of the, uh, the vlogs that I, I repost of these, the vlog for last Friday, I could not upload, but you can watch it in, uh, under the live tab. Um, uh, I don't know what, what happened there. It just won't let me upload that. But uh, I, I hope this is giving you some ideas. I hope you have a very good weekend. Thank you so much. Let me know what you're reading. Share what you're reading. Or or we'll we'll see each other on uh, if you, on the uh, sprints this weekend. Tomorrow it's on Sarah's channel, Bookish Knitter. I think she said 2 o'clock my time, 4 o'clock Eastern. And then uh, Tiffany's channel on Sunday at three o'clock my time five o'clock her time typically and then on monday evening is i think it's lee's turn on dark roots creations so there's your we're done with sprints here for unless we do something spontaneously which fighting this cold i'm probably just going to sleep a whole lot i'm currently reading a historical mystery called murder at the abbey by irina shapiro um i might once I start talking about all these spy books, I just want to read all the spy books. So I might start doing that too. Awesome. 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 Thank you very much. This cold just better go and gone. So um, I, ugh, it's just being inconvenient right now. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Please hit like, subscribe, notification bell. Tell people about this because the more the merrier we can be alone together this way and uh remember you don't get good per person points if you're reading something you're not liking so reading is fun read fun things it's okay to set things down and uh as the banner that i'm trying to set up here says don't be a bookworm be a bookie monster nom, nom, nom. god bless <laughs>